Okay, the Apple Watch Series 9 is here, and what you really wanna know is, how much of an upgrade is this over the Apple Watch Series 8, and how much faster is it over the Series 8, because this Apple Watch has the first performance upgrade that we've seen in three years of Apple Watch updates, so hopefully the Series 9 chip is uh, gonna lead to some speed improvements. Maybe I already know the answer to that, and it's a little interesting. So stay tuned for that in the video. But first, let me take you back and show you uh, what's in these relatively small Apple Watch boxes now. Here is our McDonald's-style Happy Meal Apple Watch box. You can see as you turn it over, they have like these flaps on the back. You unfold it, and you get like a really colorful display of a bunch of Apple Watches with different bands. And then as you open this thing up, what you're gonna see that's new here on the Apple Watch Series 9 is it does actually come with a braided cable. So the only other Apple Watch to get a braided cable uh, before this was the first generation Apple Watch Ultra, but now braided cables are shipping standard on uh, the Apple Watch Series 9 and also on the new iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro. But besides that in the box, that's it, right? There's no charging brick. The only other thing you're gonna find here is the Apple Watch Series 9 and that's about it. When I first booted up this watch, the thing I was really interested to see is what's exactly new here? Because when I take a look at the old Apple Watch Series 8 and I put them side by side, these watches look identical. Like if it didn't say Series 9 on the back of this watch, I would have no idea which Apple Watch was the new one. But there are upgrades here to be fair, and there are more noticeable upgrades for consumers than Apple put in from the Series 7 to the Series 8, so I do wanna say that is good on Apple. But I think by far the biggest upgrade that Apple put in here was the S9 chip, right? This is the first performance boost that we're seeing in three years, so I was really interested to see how fast is this chip over the S8 chip, and I gotta be honest, coming into this video, I was going, okay, I don't know if there actually is going to be a huge speed boost here because when Apple showed off the S9 chip on their presentation, they didn't go over speed improvements. They actually only touted that the GPU was faster and this was going to help uh, with the animations in watchOS 10 and just like the navigation of the general user interface because watchOS 10 is more visually pleasing than previous uh, Apple Watch versions. So to really kind of test the speed on this, what I did is I took my new Series 9 Apple Watch uh, and then I took my old Apple Watch Ultra 1 that does have an S8 chip just so you can have a nice little visual distinction uh, between each watch. But yes, the Ultra 1 is supposed to be slower with the S8 chip in it. And I started just tapping around like opening up uh, apps on both of the watches. And at first I was like, okay, there doesn't really seem to be a speed improvement here on the Series 9. The apps seem to be opening just about as quick uh, on the Apple Watch Ultra. Maybe Apple was right here. Like the only improvement here is going to be uh, for just how responsive the system interface looks when you're scrolling through things. And yes, that is true. Uh, if you look at some of like the like widget views uh, in watchOS 10, as you scroll through them, as you scroll through like lists or just navigate the general user interface, it's not a huge improvement. Uh, it was a little bit more responsive, a little bit smoother. So the fluidity of the user interface was just a little bit nicer looking, a little bit smoother. But going back to that speed part, right? Like we were opening apps side by side and you know, there wasn't really a big speed improvement. Um, what I really noticed was I was opening very simple apps at first. I was opening things like uh, the timer or opening up the calendar. A lot of Apple Watch apps are very simple and I wasn't really seeing the benefits of the S9 chip there. But as I started to open up more complex apps like the music app or going into certain views and weather or even opening up uh, the app store, then I started to see, okay, it's not just uh, that the animations are a little bit more fluid, there is a speed performance increase here because on the S9 chip, it was opening faster. Uh, there's other things that chips do that make the user experience better. And I think the big thing for the Series 9, which is a huge experience boost, uh, is the improvements that Apple made to dictation and on-device Siri. So Siri on the Series 9 is much faster. It is a night and day difference over the older Series 8. I was doing a bunch of Siri requests and the on-device stuff, like setting a reminder or something like that, was super fast on uh, the Series 9 device. It was almost instant, Whereas on the Apple Watch Ultra with the S8 chip, you can see the loading took a little bit longer. Uh, even device requests that had to go through the internet uh, just seemed to be faster 
on the Series 9 in general. And you can see as I'm dictating to Siri, uh, just how much faster it's picking up on the Series 9 over the S8 chip. So this was an upgrade that Apple mentioned on the Series 9 that, you know, maybe it's not as exciting as, oh, a, a speed boost upgrade that's gonna make everything load faster. But uh, yeah, I use Siri a lot on the Apple Watch and I use dictation a lot on the Apple Watch because even though it does have a native keyboard, it's not exactly the best typing experience. Like if you can talk out loud and use dictation on the Apple Watch, that's probably the best way to navigate. So these are improvements that I think are the most noticeable uh, because of that S9 chip. And I feel like that part of the experience is a pretty big upgrade, which is good for the Series 9. Um, now, there are some other improvements to the Series 9. It gets a brighter display. So instead of uh, 1,000 nits of display brightness, it now matches the Apple Watch Ultra 1 at 2,000 nits of display brightness. So um, you're really not gonna notice this display brightness unless you go outside and it's in bright direct sunlight. But when you do, the screen is more legible. So that's nice to have on the uh, Series 9 Apple Watch. And there's also some other improvements like the double pinch gesture, but a big but here, um, I am reviewing this currently in September and that feature isn't out until October. Yeah, it's coming via a software update. So if you bought an Apple Watch Series 9 or if you're planning on buying one, this feature isn't out yet. And I feel like that was one of the bigger features that Apple showed off on the Series 9. And I have no way of testing that right now. So I guess uh, that will be saved for a future review video where I can test that feature out and see how much more of a difference it makes using the Apple Watch in my daily life. And then finally, the other thing that's in this S9 chip is a new ultra wideband 2 chip. And this thing really impressed me. This was such an unexpected upgrade for the Apple Watch Series 9 for me. So I actually tested this out with my uh, new iPhone 15 Pro because I do think you need an ultra wideband 2 device to use this, but basically, I was able to find my iPhone from more than like 60 feet away. Like it connected, it gave me really good uh, proximity data and directions like as I was getting closer to the iPhone. And that is really cool. Like I cannot wait for AirTags 2 with this ultra wideband 2 chip. It's gonna be a huge improvement. And then the other nice thing with that ultra wideband chip, it's like a small nice thing, is that if you do have like a HomePod and it's like playing something, uh, the now playing screen pops up on your Apple Watch. So there's nothing in this video I mentioned where I think the Series 9 is a, I must go out and upgrade to this device. But I also do think uh, a lot of the nice improvements here do make it a bigger upgrade uh, than I think most people give it credit for. Now, again, it's not a huge, tremendous, revolutionary upgrade, but there's a lot of nice things in the Series 9. Again, this is a product line that is almost 10 years old at this point, so I don't think we should expect major year-over-year -year upgrades. And ultimately, I can kind of view that as a good thing. You know, maybe I'm spinning this in a way, but I feel like we lived in a world where every year Apple came out with a new watch and we had to run out and upgrade to buy a new watch. Oh, oh no, the old watch that I got a year ago, uh, it's no longer good. I need to run out and buy a new watch. I feel like that's not a great thing. Don't forget, this is not a device you can set up yet without an iPhone. You need an iPhone to own an Apple Watch. It's not independent, it's an accessory. And if you think about upgrading an accessory year over year, especially one that's a $400 accessory, it would be uh, it would be bad. Like if I if I came on here and said, "Oh, the Series Eight is worthless. You have to get a Series 9. that would be bad for Apple Watch. I think so. If you have an Apple Watch that works fine right now, especially if you're on a Series Seven or a Series Eight, there's really no reason to upgrade at this point. Um, if you have an older Apple Watch like a Series Five, Series Four, there there have been enough improvements over those past you know three to four years where if you get a Series Nine you're actually gonna get a lot of new features, design improvements, uh, nice things on this watch that'll make you go, oh, I'm, I'm glad I waited to upgrade. Uh, I'm glad I upgraded because it, it's a nicer user experience overall, uh, but you don't have to run out and upgrade every year. And uh, yeah, so that, that's pretty much my thoughts on the Series 9. I don't know if that was intelligent. It was just kind of like, that's how I'm feeling right now. Uh, so yeah, it's a good watch still the same price point as the Series 8. It's it, it's a little bit better. And I guess that's where the Apple Watch is. Uh, it's still a great product. I love my Apple Watch. I wear my Apple Watch every single day. I'm gonna continue wearing an Apple Watch every single day. I, I love it for the health features. Uh, I love it for quick notifications. Uh, if you've never owned an Apple Watch before, I think the Series 9 is worth it. Uh, if you're coming again from a really old Apple Watch, I think the Series 9 is worth it. But I guess I would also say that, um, 
when I was thinking about the Series 9 and the speed improvements to it, to the chip, I was kind of going, okay, maybe the other watch in the lineup, the Apple Watch SE, which is $250, a really good uh, starting Apple Watch. When I came into this, I was wondering if I was gonna be like, maybe I can't recommend that watch anymore because it's on, on the older chip and it's not gonna be as speedy. But after testing out the Series 9, I, I can still recommend the Apple Watch SE. That might still be the best valued Apple Watch out there. So ju just a fair bit of warning before you decide on your purchase, look at the feature set between the SE and the Series 9, and really decide if you need to spend $150 more uh, on the Series 9. For some people, absolutely. It's, it's a better watch, right? It has more features, but some people are still gonna be fine with that uh, Apple Watch SE. Still a great watch, uh, apparently. So yeah, hopefully you liked this video and found it informative. I hope I helped you with your purchasing decision. If I did, give me a like. Uh, if you want to buy an Apple Watch Series 9 or an Apple Watch SE, check out the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.